Hello and welcome to chapter nine, this, the nervous system, the spinal cord and the spinal nerves. When we look at this, we're gonna break it down. Um, first off, look at the structural divisions. Then we're gonna look at the main cells, the neuron and the neuroglia. Then we're going to look at how impulses are transferred with the nerve impulse, then how they go across the synapse. Briefly talk about the function or the structure of the spinal cord and then get a little bit into the fight or flight of the autonomic nervous system. Now, when you break it down, there is a lot going on with the names and there's a lot of words that go with it. So let's turn this on here. To begin with, you have the nervous system. The nervous system is broken down into two groups. The central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. Then you'll have the peripheral nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are the nerves that come out of the brain and spinal cord. So you have the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. nerves. The peripheral nervous system is then broken down again into two groups. The first one is involuntary. Sorry, the first one is voluntary. The voluntary group controls the skeletal muscles and this is the somatic nervous system. The other group is involuntary and this is the autonomic nervous system. Automatic is involuntary and this works the smooth muscle, smooth muscle of the guts and blood vessel, your heart, cardiac muscle and glands in terms of secreting. Then the autonomic nervous system is broken down again into two nervous systems. You have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. If you think about the sympathetic, it's the one that's encouraging you and helping you in a stressful situation or the fight or flight situation. When you look at the parasympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system is seen as the rest or digest, or in this uh, textbook, they call it the SLUD system, which is salivation, lacrimation, which is tears, urination, digestion, and defecation. Uh, and so we'll look at those when we look more at the autonomic nervous system. Okay, back to the breakup of the nervous system. So when you look at it structurally, you have the brain and you have the spinal cord and those are the central nervous system. Coming off of these two main organs, you have the cranial nerves, which will come off the brain and we'll talk about those a little later. These are things that control like your eyes, your optic nerve, your ocular motor. There's 12 of them, we'll look at them later. And then you have spinal nerves. Coming in between each vertebrae, there is a spinal nerve that comes out. The structure of the nervous system, there's two different types of cells. There's a neuron. The neuron are the functional ones. These are the ones that are specified that carry the impulses. You have the cell body. Here's the cell body. Information comes in the dendrites and then it goes out the axons. Notice that the impulse is one way and it's directional and we'll talk about why that is, very important. And then the axon will go into what's called um, terminal buttons or axon buttons and that's where it'll either connect with another uh, neuron by the dendrite or the cell body or it will affect or it will attack it will be attached to the effector, which in this situation is the muscle. So that is the neuron. Then there is something called neuroglia. And neuroglia are the myelinated sheath. Um, the neuroglia are the cells that will help support and nourish the neuron. So they protect, they support, and they nourish they aid in repair. They also are good at removing pathogens and impurities and they regulate the composition of fluid around the cell. There are different types. There are the Schwann cells, there are neuro or oligodendrite cells and astrocytes. When we talk about the neurons, the neurons of the uh, peripheral nervous system 
are covered with this neurolemma, which is a Schwann cell. The Schwann cell produces this myelinated sheath, which is a form of insulation speeding up the function of the nervous system in terms of conduction. Then you have the astrocytes. The astrocytes will connect the neuron to capillaries. And then you have the oligodendrite cells. And the oligodendrite cells are the cells that are found more in the central nervous system than the peripheral nervous system. So those are um, the function of neuroglia, mainly structure and support. Okay, when you look at the nervous system at work, basically the nervous system works by electrical impulses being sent along fibers and transmitted from cell to cell with a high, at a highly specialized junction called a synapse. The nervous system works by what's called a nervous impulse, and the nervous impulse is an electrical impulse. When you look at this uh, graph, what it shows is Normally, the inside of the neuron is negatively charged relative to the outside. It's a little confusing how that works because what you have is the pumping of sodium and potassium, which are both positive. But if more positives move outside, that makes the inside relatively negative. And that's what's ha happening in the resting potential. The resting potential is usually about 70 millivolts, which isn't very strong in terms of voltage, but it's strong enough to make the electron work. The resting potential is set up based on a pumping action of sodium being pumped outside. Three sodium are pumped outside for every two potassium pumped inside. This keeps a nice negative membrane potential. Then, once the stimulus comes down the axon, so the stimulus is transferred down the axon, once it gets to the axon, it'll cause a disturbance up the axon. When that disturbance is great enough to reach what's called threshold, you have an all or none reaction, which means it either completely goes or it doesn't go at all. Once the stimulus happens, it will cause the voltage-gated sodium channels to enter. Since the sodium is in large amounts on the outside, once these channels open, the sodium will come inside. The resting potential is initially negative. If you have negatives and then you have positives, if you have positives coming in, that negative leaves from the inside and the inside becomes more polarized or it is more positive, so it is now becomes depolarized. Once the, uh, the membrane potential inside gets to a positive of about positive 40, the sodium gates will close and the potassium gates open. The potassium, which was in large concentration on the inside of the um, axon, will now leave by diffusion causing the inside, if positives leave, the inside becomes more negative. So that's why it's called repolarization. It becomes more negative. Now sometimes there's an overshoot because the gates, um, more negatives will leave than you need them to leave. So it becomes hyperpolarized. Then all the gates close and the ATP pump set up and the uh, sodium will be pumped three outside to two potassium inside, which will then reestablish the resting potential. It's this electrical impulse that will move down the axon. So the stimulus causes this moving of positive charges in, producing it more positive, which will then set off the stimulation down the axon. The myelinated sheath helps with the insulation of it, and that's because all these gates don't have to open in order for the axon or the action potential to move. The signal can jump, so it jumps from one nodes of Ranvier to the next, and that results in a faster conduction of the neurons. It's called saltatory conduction because you have the moving of, movement of salt in the fact of sodium and potassium 
are both salts. The impulse will then move down the axon until it comes to a synapse. At the synapse, this is where you have the junction between the transmitting nerve impulse from one nerve neuron to another. You have the basic structure, which you have the presynaptic cell, and you have the postsynaptic cell. The presynaptic cell will release a neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter travels through the cleft and will bind to receptors on the postsynaptic cell. So let's look at this. What happens here is calcium ions will open. The, first off, the action impulse, the impulse comes down the axon. It will result in calcium channels to open. As the calcium channels open, the calcium will then cause the vesicles containing neurotransmitters to move to the membrane and release the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. As it goes into the synaptic cleft, the neurotransmitter will then bind to the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron or the muscle, whichever it happens to be. With that bound neuron or the neurotransmitter bound to this receptor, it will cause these channels to open and usually sodium goes in. With the movement of sodium, if it's great enough, it will set off an action potential at the postsynaptic junction. Okay. Um, I will do the spinal cord in a second video. So just to, um, yeah, I'll do the spinal cord in the second video. Please make sure you pay more attention to the synapse and the action potential or the neuron. I have put some videos relating to both on Blackboard. See you in part two.